All right, so here we are. Uh, if you're here, you want to learn how to make games on Roblox, but specifically how to code them. The first thing I would like to say is coding is not the only thing involved in making a game. It is simply uh, a facet of it. So it definitely takes you um, down the rabbit hole of Roblox development, but there's generally gonna be a couple more components involved in creating a full game than just programming. So um, I'd like to provide you with the ability to code on Roblox uh, through a series of tutorials. And um, you know, hopefully that can pique your interest enough to also explore some of the other um, avenues of game development as well. Um, but if you're here, you know, I have it in the title, you want to learn how to code. So thank you for trying to learn something new today that you did not know yesterday. Um, before we begin, there is a couple of things to go over. The first of which is IO operation. Now this is just, this is sort of a computer science concept um, and the stuff I'm gonna go over here, you know, it's, it's sort of overarching things that I'd just like to briefly touch on um, because I think they're important. There's some other stuff involved, but you don't really need to know it before we start. Um, and for certain things, especially Roblox development, you don't really need to know how a lot of stuff works considering you don't have to do a lot of cleanup. It's pretty simple. So the first thing we're gonna go over is IO operation, right? IO operation, what does that stand for? It stands for input output operation. It means to program is to take some input and get some output. Um, or maybe you don't provide any specific input, you get an output. Um, it's to do something and to get something in return. And then you, the programmer, um, have control of the middleman stage of that whole that whole thing, how all of that comes together. So you're given input, and what do we want that input to do? That's the output. Um, it's important to cover that because as we go, um, we're gonna sort of refer to that at least for the first few videos um, I'm expecting to, and so uh, I think I'd like to have touched on that. Um, not super important that you, you know remember it or anything, but just wanted to touch on it quickly. Uh, thing number two, uh, random access memory. Now, uh, if you if you know about computers, um, if you are you know if you're watching this, you could also just be in computer science, uh, any other number of things. Random access memory uh, is where your computer stores temporary information. Um, so, without going too deep into it, basically, when you play a Roblox game, you are reserving some amount of accessible memory within your computer's RAM, random access memory. And when you make allocations, which is just to say that you do something within your program, you are using one of two resources. That is either the random access memory, um, which is used for storage, or you are using CPU time, which is just processing time. That's the other resource available to you as a programmer. Um, you know, it's not, it's not something you necessarily need to, to know or, or grasp, um, but we're here to touch on it because, you know, this is the first video. I'd like to just talk about foundational stuff. If you're confused, I think that's totally, that's totally valid. And, and there's also like, these things are, are not a make it or break it thing. Um, and, you know, you don't necessarily need to know them to code. Um, they're just some of the foundational stuff. So again, we're just touching on it. Um, random access memory, when you do something, um, then, and you want that thing to be available for future use, you put it in random access memory in your computer. From this point on, I will refer to it as RAM, um, which is what it's typically, you will hear it called. Uh, and you know, we'll go, we'll go from there and, uh, I'll probably be using the term RAM within, uh, within our, within our discussions. Um, ring number three, get Roblox studio. It's very simple to get. Um, you know, people are going to tell you, you can, you can, uh, 
the, all these other complicated things, Roho, link it up to another code editor, you know, go out to Visual Studio Code and stuff. You don't have to do that, um, especially as a beginner. I think it's best you get in Roblox Studio because you have the toolbox and all these other things available to you. Um, and for whatever it's worth, it's not the worst editor or integrated environment in the world. Um, and yeah, you have to use it to some capacity regardless. So get Roblox Studio. Get Roblox Studio, click Create at the top of the home Roblox page, or whatever page on Roblox you're on. There's a, a tab, a bar at the top of the screen that says Create, and from there you can download Roblox Studio, prompted, create a place, and then you will land yourself in something that looks a little bit like what you're seeing on the screen now. This is a, a blank Roblox place. Nothing in it. Um, and when you open Roblox Studio, this is going to be typically what you will see. Um, you know, if you've used some other engines before, it might look a little familiar. Um, but yeah, very basic thing here. So, a couple things we're going to go over. Um, the first thing is just a little bit of setup. I'm not asking you to know what all of these things are right now. Uh, I would just prefer that you go ahead and do them. We'll uh, just roll with it, and over the course of the future, we'll talk about it. Um, when you open Roblox Studio, you're gonna have these menu items at the top. Uh, you're gonna wanna click View, and from View, you're gonna wanna open, if it's not already open, Output, Script Analysis, Command Bar, and then also Explorer and Properties. Uh, Explorer and Properties, we aren't going to use today, but we will use them pretty shortly in the future here, so um, definitely good to go ahead and get those opened up. With all that said, we are we are all set. We are actually going to use Explorer today, but just for a moment. Um, so there we go. So Explorer is open, properties, script analysis, um, output, and the command bar. That's all of this stuff over on the sides of your screen. That isn't the actual game itself. So. Uh, next step here, over in Explorer, mine is on the right side, um, I think that's where it usually opens up, but it might be somewhere else on your screen, you're more than welcome to drag it around. Um, you're going to want to right click on Server Script Service, and from there, click Insert Object, and then click Script, right? And you're going to get something, I've enlarged my font, yours will be smaller than mine if it's your first time in Roblox Studio. Um, just so that it's able to be seen from the video, but this is a normal script, um, and we aren't really going to go into Explorer today, but you have created a script in your game, um, and you can go ahead and get rid of print hello world, um, because it kind of talk that involves some concepts we're not really going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about today is, uh, memory allocation, um, creating the concept of identifiers, um, the concept of variables um, and storing information in RAM. All that's to say, uh, today we're going to talk about one of the most simple things there is in programming, which is to create an identifier, and then that identifier identifies some memory. Um, how do you do that in a language like Luau? Um, well, a keyword you're going to see a lot in Luau. When I say keyword, uh, I'm talking about a word that is identified in the language and type it, it'll be bold. That's not the actual definition of it, but uh, we don't want to go too deep into it right now. So, an identifier, right? Let's open up paint.net here, right? And then paint.net, very old school. So, let's say that we have a couple blocks of memory and RAM. Well, you know, we'll just say that this represents uh, RAM, whatever. RAM here, which is a bunch of blocks of memory. Um, you know, this is, there's not four units of RAM space, but um, the point here is an identifier. An identifier is simply a name given to something in RAM, right? That way you can access that piece of information later. So, if we wanted to have the number one in RAM so that we can access it later, maybe one is the maximum, is the number of players required to start a game, and we want to 
want to store that information so that we can grab it when we'd like to. We need to give a name to this piece of information. That is what an identifier is, right? So, uh, in Luau, you do that by typing local identifier equals information. Now you're going to see underlines here. Um, the keyword local is something that is absolutely do it every time on Roblox. Um, you're not necessarily going to be, see it being used all the time in, in traditional Lua. In Luau, you should always be writing local before your identifiers. Um, and uh, you know, there's, there's some... Um, there's some nuance to that, but for the most part, especially with these simple examples we're doing here, um, you know, the, you're going to always want to have local there. Um, and we're not really going to talk about what that is today. We're just kind of interested in identifiers and information. Um, so, all right, moving on. Now, um, local identifier equals information. So what does that mean? Well, as we said, an identifier is a name given to a piece of information in memory. And information here is going to be some kind of information. So for the purpose of today's video, we're talking about one, um, and then that is the piece of information that is being stored, whereas identifier is the name of that information, right? Um, so if we did, uh, if we were going to do with our go with our example earlier, saying that one is the maximum number of players required to start, or the minimum number of players required to start a game, we might say min numbers required to start equals one, and that is a valid Luau statement. Um, min numbers required to start equals one. So, again, just one more time to run through it before we move on local just go ahead and type it we'll go over it in the future for now um, we're just gonna roll with the keyword local always write it before your identifiers in Lua Lua on Roblox do that um, now minimum numbers required to start is the is the name of the information we are storing one is the specific information we are storing in RAM and so to go back to I.O. for a second, <clears throat> we are performing an I.O. operation here. The input is 1, and the output is storing it in RAM um, under the name min numbers required to start. Um, I.O. is sort of a broad scope thing, so it can be applied to a number, a number of concepts. But uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, we are doing an I.O. operation here. Um, we are providing input and receiving output of some kind. Um, you know, you know that could be, people may disagree with me on that, um, but it's not a major point of the video. So um, moving on, right? Um, so we have created, we have created our first, what is called a variable, right? In Lua, uh, everything is a variable. There is not, uh, some languages have something called a constant uh, it does not exist in Lua and the reason for that is because um, the there's not any kind of like um, heavy typing rules which is something I'm not really gonna go into today um, but what we have here is referred to as a variable this combination of identifier information is a variable so we have we have that here now so next thing we're going to talk about is how do we access that information right um, we have we've created the identifier so all we need to do in order to get that piece of information uh, is to go ahead and access it like this you can literally think about it like this anytime that I type min numbers required to start now I'm literally, it's just a shortcut to typing one, basically. Um, it's just gonna take the information and put it where the identifier is, uh, more or less. So we're gonna roll with that. So if we were gonna do 
um, something, this operation here, what do you think that would be? Would be two, because it's one plus one, right? Um, you know, of course, this isn't valid code for reasons we'll get to, but um, that operation is two. If you do it again, three, um, on and on and on. And uh, that is going to be the uh, sort of the foundation here for today's video. Now, um, we're going to introduce one thing here. We're not going to talk about what it is. We're not going to we're not going to go over a whole lot of it. Um, we're going to go over it super briefly here. Um, and that is the word print, right? We will get to it in a future video. That is not um, the thing that we're using for today's video. However, we are talking about output today, so we do need some way to display output. Print is simply a way to push information to the Roblox output. Um, server has output, client has output. Um, all you're doing is giving information in a way that it is uh, visible to the end user. Um, and so for just so you're aware, um, the output thing that we have opened, for me it's on the bottom of the screen, I think that's where it normally opens, might be somewhere else on your screen, is where that information is going to be displayed. Um, so if we did what we were saying earlier, which is print, min numbers required to start, in these parentheses here we're, is what it wants you to tell it, well, what do you want to display? What do you want to show? Um, what are you showing to the end user? Um, and for our instance here, we are going to go ahead and give it the identifier, uh, min numbers required to start, which again is just one. So if we come up here to the top of our screen and we click run and the game runs, we get one as the output. Um, again, output, input, output operations. We did an operation input uh, which the input we provided was the identifier and the output is that we get one into the output section um, in studio right um, you know if it's a little if it's a little strange right now um, you know we're gonna do a little bit of a circle learning thing with this and we will briefly cover some concepts again and again in the future um, but this is the absolute foundation of programming and probably the simplest thing to learn um, I'm also going to in the description of this video I will link some further information about identifiers and some other stuff as well uh, if you'd like to go ahead and research that on your own but for the purpose of today's video this is all we're going over um, is to take some kind of information right we make an identifier information and then uh, if we were gonna do like, I'm trying to avoid certain things just for simplicity. Um, we're gonna take a hundred, and then if we if we we have now created an identifier, and um, that identifier is information, and we are storing every time that we type information, we are typing 100, right? Um, because that's what that identifier identifies. That's what it represents. Um, so now if we come here and we print information, um, and it's not actually going to like the fact that I did that while I was in the uh, running thing, but see now down here in the output says 100, right? So I think we're going to call it there on today's video. This is going to be a very short one. Um, as we cover some more complicated concepts, we will get to some longer videos. This video is sort of an introduction. If you're familiar with programming, you can likely uh, skip it and you know and be totally fine. Um, but I wanted to touch on this stuff just because I feel like it's pretty foundational and important to know. Um, and this series is for new programmers, right? New programmers, people who know nothing about programming, 